Buongiorno, Gerald. This is Piero San Giorgio. Buongiorno. This is Gerardo Cialantano. <laughs> I hope you. My real name. My real name is Cialantano. Oh, like the singer. Yeah, Adriano Cialantano. Is he, is he from your family? I don't know, but they shortened my name to Cialantano. Ah, okay. Well, let's say yes. Cialantano. Let's say you have a you have another famous Cialante around the world. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm really happy to speak to you in in January 2020. I'm um, a subscriber to your Trends Journal, and it's always a fascinating read, especially to get the the trends for the following year and now the trends for the decade. Uh, Gerald, tell me what makes you such a good trend caster. Well, I've been doing it for 40 years. This is my 40th year, <clears throat> and because of my career, you know, I started at a graduate school running political campaigns in Westchester County, which is the richest county in America. And then they sent me up to Albany, which is the capital of New York State. And I was the assistant to the secretary of the New York State Senate at 24 years old. And then I designed and instructed American politics and campaign technology at St. John's University. And then I became... <clears throat> the number two guy in a major trade association, and I was uh, doing government affairs work, basically <laughs> killing environmental legislation at the height of the environmental movement back in the 1970s when it first hit in America. And so I learned from being on the other side, and I saw what it was about. You know, at 28 years old, I was staying at the Willard Hotel, which is you know, a famous hotel in D.C., and putting my meetings on at the Hay Adams, where it's a top lobbying group where you put your meetings on. And I was with Ronald Reagan for an hour and a half, hired him to speak to our group two days before he's announcing he's running for president. And so I got that kind of background from being on the other side. And I started to grow up in my early 30s, and I quit. But what happened was... The Iranian conflict was breaking out in the late 1970s, and Jimmy Carter, who was the president at the time, came back and said that the Shah of Iran was the uh, stability of the Middle East. And in the Bronx, we used to have a saying, bullshit has its own sound. And I knew this thing was going down. You know, millions of people taking to the streets, and it was a brutal dictatorship. And most Americans don't know the history of how the CIA and the MI6 of the UK overthrew the democratically elected government of Mossadegh in 1953 because he had the nerve to nationalize the oil. <laughs> and Winston Churchill, it's a fact, he came out in the documents in 2017 said, we need their energy. And it was owned by Anglo-Iranian Anglo oil, better known as BP today, and Standard Oil, better known as ExxonMobil. <clears throat> so anyway, I knew that they were going to overthrow this guy. And rather than getting caught up in the let's hate Iran, I said, what will the implications be? And I realized that gold and oil prices were going to go up. So I started speculating in the futures markets, not knowing a thing I was doing, and basically put a $5,000 bet and brought it up to almost three quarters of a million dollars betting on the futures markets. But I became a political atheist. Mm -hmm. So I look at things for the way they are not the way I want them to be. And people are so caught up in their belief systems that they can't see the current events forming future trends for what they are. They take positions on them. And the other thing I do differently is I call my system global nomic. <clears throat> not only do I look at the world, but I make connections between different fields. So I have a saying that opportunity misses those who view the world through the eyes of their profession. And so if you're an economist and you're only looking at economic data, you better grow up. You know, there's a whole mm -hmm. socioeconomic and geopolitical, environmental, and on and on and on. I look over 300 different trend categories, always trying to make connections between different fields. And what the magazine, the Trends Journal, does is we look at what's going on, what it means, and where it's going. Nobody does that in the major media. Think about it. Name me the university that teaches trend forecasting. Name me one. No. They no. don't exist. I can't. Mm. 
And you know why? They don't know how to do it. Go back to the new year. All the media does. This is what happened last year. What the hell do I care what happened <laughs> last year? What's going to happen next year? Yes. They won't do what's happening next year because they don't know how to do it. So that's basically what makes me who I am. And then my background, you know, I mean, I, you know, I'm a Napolitano from the Bronx. So I'm born to be free. <laughs> and I had a great family. And um, ha, all I am are what the ancestors gave me, just to make that 100% clear. So I had a great background, a great bringing up, saw a lot of different things. So, you know, I, 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 again, I was born to be free. Born to be me. Yeah, I, 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 know, I'm being a fellow Italian as well. I, I understand what you mean. Especially Naples is is just a fantastic environment for creativity and getting stuff done w with no rules, uh, despite with the no government. Rules. Exactly. <laughs> I was not put on this earth to take orders. <laughs> and any junior that wants to come over here and tell me what to do, come over here and try to tell me what to do. Hey, Katson Macron, come and tell me what to do. Hey, Trumpy boy, tell me what to do. Yeah. <laughs> Now, one, in your, one it, after another. In your, in how your, could people tell? How could people take orders from these morons? Uh, Now, in your in your forty five years experience, forty forty years. What's as your, a trend forecaster, as a trend I, forecaster, what's? But I had a, I had a, I had a good ten years in the in politics. You know, I met presidents, prime ministers, uh -huh. princes. You know, I've been there. But it's ten forty years as a trend forecaster. What are your your best achievements in terms of for, forecast? The ones you are most uh, proud of? Well, I don't say proud, but the ones I've hit. You know, the first. I was the first person to call the 1987 stock market crash. Wow. I called the dot-com crash. It's in our magazine. And dot-com crash I called in October of, uh, of 1999. And I said it would crash by the second quarter of 2000. I took out the domain name, the Panic of 08, in 2007. Wow. And, and, and then I, the bottled water trend, whole health healing The term clean foods, I coined that term in 1993. And, you know, so a number of them on, uh, oh, oh, back in the, when the internet revolution just began, what's called Facebook now and all what the people are doing, I called it uh, uh, tribalism, mm -hmm. uh, uh, online tribalism. And that's what it's really become. And, and the whole shopping craze. Oh, the Paul of the, the death of the malls in America. And, you know, I call that one, you know, talking to the, to the uh, trade association that represented malls in 2007. And I told them that the whole mall thing was going to start unraveling. They were all the same, same products, no difference mm -hmm. in too many of them. So those are the kind of things I've, I've uh, techno tribalism. That's what I called yes. it back in. 1994. And um, we, are, we are standing a new decade now, to 2020s. Are they going to be the roaring 20s or, or, or the opposite? And, and basically, what, what are your trends for the next decade? Well, the biggest ones are um, the Greatest Depression. We just heard from the new uh, IMF, the International Mafia, uh, excuse me, Monetary Fund uh, head, warning of a great depression. It's going to be the greatest depression. And the reason it's going to be the greatest depression is that, um, go back to the great depression, the 1930s. There were only 2 billion people on the planet. Yeah. And we've added 5.7 billion people in 90 years. You think you have a migrant and refugee crisis now? You haven't seen anything yet. Yeah. People are going to be leaving wherever they are to try to escape the poverty, the corruption, the violence, no jobs, no future. That's the biggest one. And all the implications, homeless problems, people sleeping on the streets. You know, I, I was in, um, the last time I was in Italy was in 2015. I went to the, the was it the World's, not the World's Fair, what do they call it? It was up in Milano. Milano, yeah. The, the World and, Fair. 
Yeah, it was terrible. It was brought to you by Coca Cola or McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, you know? I can imagine. And and but anyway, I have a cousin. I have a cousin Vinny, <laughs> and he lives. He, and half of the year he lives in the minority. Mm-hmm. And he picked me up and he said, "You know, I've never driven from Naples up to Rome on the coast." So right, let's go. I couldn't believe how many people how how destitute so many the places were. Yeah. How poor they were, and how many refugees were. This is 2015. Yeah, we're on the streets. Yeah, we haven't seen anything yet. And what's missing in all of the talk coming out of Europe from um, from uh, the Northern League and everybody else? How did the refugee problem start? When did it really get worse? Oh, it couldn't have been when NATO and Sarkozy and Cameron and Obama destroyed Libya. Yeah. Totally out of the news. Oh, why do you have all those Syrian refugees? Couldn't be because of the murderers of America and the other murdering countries. Assad has to go. Kills over 500,000 people and displaces over 10 million. So in all this talk, nobody's talking about the wars, the Yemeni war, the the Iraq war, the Libyan war, the Syrian war. So now when the greatest depression hits, we're going to have refugee problems like no one has ever can imagine. And they don't know how to deal with it. And again, they're not talking about the cause. The other one, the homeless problems, violence, crime. And on the other sides of it, in the marketing end, what we tell our marketers is, look, the people are down. Bring them up. Bring them some joy and happiness instead of all fear and terror, because that's all they're selling these days is fear and terror. And so the roaring 2020s, you know, bring up the, you know, one of the greatest exports America had was its music from ragtime to swing to rock and roll to Motown. And now it's no town. You got your rap, save your rap. I got my own. Don't want to hear it. Did you ever hear that great Italian American, Louis Prima? Yeah. Say <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Louis Prima used to say he was in. He was born in New Orleans. He was the Louis Armstrong, the white Louis Armstrong back in the day. And he yeah. used to say all the time, "Play pretty for the people. People having a rough time. Bring their spirits up." But the media is too stupid to do it. The entertainment industry is too arrogant and closed minded to do it. And the smart entrepreneurs are going to do it. The best way to make money now in product and, and in entertainment is to lift the people's spirits. Oh, we're talking about Adriano Cialantano. And that cat lifted, what do they call him? They used to say something about he's the guy that brought bell bottoms to, uh, to Italy, the bell bottom be. pants. It could be, yes. You know, and yeah. So it's that kind of thing that they're missing. So the biggest things we see are the new world disorder. We're going to see revolutions, protests. We're already seeing it. What do you, you look around the world? France, uh, Hong Kong, Lebanon, <clears throat> Ecuador, Chile, Colombia, Bolivia, Algeria, uh, Sudan, South Africa, Zimbabwe, Cameroon, Mali, all over the world, revolutions, protests. And this is just the beginning. Now, can we... By the way, did you end up reading reading my book? Because the conclusions are exactly the same. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Now, can we turn some of the most um, awful trends? Um, because what you describe means uh, potentially quite a lot of wars. Uh, can, we, can we turn some of these trends towards peace? possibly some prosperity, but certainly, um, perhaps even more importantly, sanity, because the leaders you describe seems to be completely clueless on, on what consequences they are creating. Take the word leaders. Yeah. I mentioned before, I was not put on this earth to take orders from anybody. I don't need a leader. I mentioned all these revolutions, protests, riots going on. Mm-hmm. Who are the leaders? Who are the leaders in Lebanon? 
Who are the leaders in, in, that started the Yellow Vest movement in France? Who are the leaders in, in, in Algeria? And it was about 50 weeks now, the people taking to the streets each week. No leaders. It's up to the people. Look, you may know this place called Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the leader? Not so many. Nobody knows the name of the person that's leading. <laughs> I, you, you have direct democracy. I actually don't. <laughs> right. You have direct democracy. Yes. Let the people vote. That, to me, is the future. The future has to be in the hands of the people. And then they say, oh, the people are too stupid. The people are too stupid? How about the people that are leading you? Look what's going on in America. Nancy Pelosi, Chucky e. Schumer, little Lindsey Graham. Mitch McConnell, these people leading me, they couldn't lead me across the street. <laughs> so the only way it's going to change to me is a renaissance. And for that to happen, we have to have peace on earth. Look what happened with the Iranian, with what America's doing. And I've been writing about this, as you know, for several years. Mm -hmm. The Iran, Saudi Arabia, Israeli triangle of death heading toward Iran, trying to get them out of the Middle East so they can control in all and all the oil. And why isn't there a peace movement going on? You know, I launched Occupy Peace, as you know. Mm -hmm. We have this billionaire Bloomberg, Michael Bloomberg, running for president. He's already spent $220 million in campaign advertising. Could you imagine if a billionaire gave $220 million to Occupy Peace? Yeah. Can you imagine all the billion, any of the billionaires gave uh, uh, one. 15th of their money to peace, we'd have peace on earth. The only way we're going, the next war is going to be the war that when they asked Albert Einstein, how will the war of the third world war will be fought? And he said, I don't know. He said, but the fourth world war will be fought with sticks and stones. If we don't have peace now, we're going to die in war. And it's coming soon. I just told you the wor new world disorder, all the revolutions, protests, riots, and demonstrations going on, and wars. If war breaks out against Iran, it's going to be, the, it is already, I believe, the first shots of the Third World War have been fired. Let's go back. I'm born in 1946, the year after the war ends. France, Italy, Germany, UK. Bombed, occupied. This is in ancient history. Yep. These were the most advanced civilizations of the time. Bombed into ruins. Occupied, murder. It's going to happen again. Now, for sure. The uh, politician system, the system that brings politicians in power. I think it's uh, no secret for anyone that is completely corrupt and has to be thrown away. However, it seems that no one no one knows how to do that. And and the, the the these revolts you you forecast, which are already happening, like in France and elsewhere, they like like even Occupy Wall Street ten almost ten years ago have been so far smashed by uh, by police and authority. Um, how, how do you see that moving forward? It has to keep going. Look what happened. How did the Berlin Wall come down? Yeah, people thousands would of leave. Days. Every day, more and more people came. Day in, day out. More and more, more and more, more and more. Until you overwhelm them. And there's more of us than them. By many, many numbers. That's for sure. <laughs> well, um, remind our listeners how to subscribe to Trends Journal, how to find you. Oh, oh it's very simple. Just go to trendsjournal.com. Trendsjournal.com. The magazine's only 29 cents a day. It's a weekly now, as you well know. We've gone from a, we used to be a quarterly to a monthly and now a weekly because events are changing so much. There's no magazine. I'm not saying this because it's my magazine. There's nothing like it in the world. 
where we look at all the current events, what they mean, what's next and where they're going. And, and the work that you do is phenomenal. I mean, you know, your, your books and your, your forecasts and your, again, it's the same thing. You're doing it all with an open mind and a, and a passione for peace and, and dignity and respect. We have to. Kindness. I have four children. I cannot sleep. I cannot, uh, I cannot do nothing. I have to, to go for what I believe is a better world. I have to. I cannot do anything else, for sure. And uh, it's not even a question of making money on it. It's, it I just have to. It's, uh, we can't leave a world that is worse, much worse, than, um, than it was when I was born in the early 70s. It is definitely much worse now, and uh, I can't, I can't, I, I can't look at my kids and say to them, "Hey, don't worry, it's going to be okay." It's not okay. It's definitely not okay. It's uh, it's going to be terrible for them. There's going to be war. There's going to be uh, epidemics. There's going to be uh, you know because when when all the things that we take for granted fall down. Then, then it's um, you know people are violent. People are you know you've 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 been in the Bronx. You know how it is. People are not nice. They can be, but uh, but but uh, if if things go bad, people are hungry. People, yeah, you. It can be tough. It can be tough. Then no, the world right. is not people full of become, snowflakes. You, you know, my saying is when people lose everything and have nothing left to lose, they lose it. And they're losing it. They have nothing left to lose. And it's against the corruption and the violence of, of the governments that are in charge. You know, the, the, the people that run for political office are the same people you hated in high school and college that wanted to be class president or head of the student council. <laughs> yes, we they're the same them. arrogant little people. <laughs> you know, and again, anybody, any leader that wants to go to war, lead the charge. Send your wife, send your kids, send your money, mm. or shut your mouth. Yeah. Can you imagine Trump going to war? Could you, could you imagine him sending his kids to war? Could you imagine that little, that little boy, Macron? Could you imagine him fighting? Could Not you imagine really. him fighting? No. No. Well, look how tough they talk. Yeah. Where are the people? The people have turned gutless, particularly in America. This is the, the people have no courage anymore. You know, I'm a, I was a little kid. I was a premature kid. And so all the big, all the bullies wanted to beat me up. I learned how to fight as a little kid. I didn't go home crying. Where are the people's fight? Now you know what they have in school? No bullying zones. I'm sure it works. <laughs> you see? It? Oh, it works perfectly. <laughs> I mean, come on. There's no men anymore. You're not even allowed to call a man a man or a woman a woman. You got to call them whatever. You can make up any gender you want now. Now nah, the whole thing is shot. The pe but remember, it does not take a majority to prevail, but rather an irate, tireless minority keen on setting brush fires of freedom in the minds of men. Samuel Adams, one of the founding fathers of America. It only takes a minority of people that will fight for freedom and I'm a warrior for the Prince of Peace I won't die for war but I fight for peace and people better grow up because if they don't fight for peace now they're going to die in war you know all this stuff about climate change shove it you're going to be dead before the climate changes they're poisoning the poisons they're putting in our food in our water, in our air. You got to get vaccinated. You got to do this. Who the hell are they telling me the guy got to get vaccinated? It's big pharma. Oh, yeah, a, a child comes out of a mother's womb, and now you're going to shove all this poison into the body, and you got the bullshit to tell me, well, we did studies, and it's fine. Shove the studies up your ass. Well, I can't agree more. Gerald, I know we're running out of time, so thank you very much for your time. Um, I'll stop the recording, but please stay online. Thanks a lot. Oh, thank you.